Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. In the last video, we kind of finally finished with the western section of the map. We actually still have a little bit to do, of course, but uh, for now, we're basically done. We just came to talk to the pawnbroker, the idea being to sell all the useless clothes, of course, that I no longer need, like all these down here. And of course, the pawnbroker doesn't actually buy my bloody clothes, so never mind, we're moving on with our lives. Uh, what are we doing today then? There's a few different things we need to do. Let's have a look at our journal. I think we can we can run the number on the armor. We can call Alice back yet again, basically. We can potentially sing karaoke. Um, we did get a sad song on tape, and Kitsuragi is here, so... I think we're going to wait till night time for the, for the whirling to sort of get a few more people in, for the light, you know, the, uh, the disco ball kind of activates at night time. So we're going to give that till, say, 7 or 8 p.m. tonight. So that's probably a couple episodes away. And we'll go sing some karaoke. Um, we need to go talk to Andre about Sooner's thoughts on the nightclub. Who's Andre again? Andre. Andre's one of the party, party boys. <laughs> we'll have to go talk to him. I've got to talk to a cell as well. When we sort that nightclub thing out, uh, something about inside again. That's that's all nightclub stuff right there. We also have the dead body, so we're gonna call the station about that and call the library about that as well. We want to go talk to Klesje, which is our only like main mission thing. And I want to go talk to. Hello. That's one brutal motor carriage. With what? Oh wow, okay. Uh, what is this? Is this Kitsuragi's car? What are you doing here? Hello. <laughs> if I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan: "Fuck the world." A snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could like hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors, cops' heads, scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. <clears throat> well, I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage. I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches f or skulls. That's the only word I've seen them censor in this entire game. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and f On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. This kind of <sighs> token punk. I guess you'd call it, I don't know, this kind of performative punk stuff. Performative is the word I was looking for. Bores the hell out of me. <laughs> like, you're not edgy, you're not cool, you're a silly little child. Okay then, let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Of course, Cindy's a skull. Who are the skulls? I assume they're like a punk group. You don't know? What kind of cop are you? Don't ask stupid questions. It's not a question. Don't get into it. No, I don't. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertne. His voice rings with excitement. Besmertai, or the Besmerti, the Immortals, are West River Sholian crime syndicates. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Jacking carriages and getting into high-speed chases. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck-all swagger, infamous for their non-verbal modus operandi. Modus operandi. Nonverbal. If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without saying a word. Wow. The lieutenant's voice is as calm as usual. A testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. That's not very nice, is it? They usually occupy the burnt out quarter in Jamrock. Or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom lighted vehicles. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. Bottom lights are for, like, chavs who want to be in Fast and Furious movies. <laughs> Do you know anything about the murder that took place here? Murder? Murder? A man was hanged in the backyard of the Whirling in Rags. Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. <clears throat> it was a man. Well, that's not the way in a minute. Also, he was hanged. 
Don't fuck around. I am the law. <laughs> he was hanged from a tree. Yeah, I mean, duh. They don't, see, they don't seem to be understanding that I am the law. These punks don't know anything. Let's just move along. I know, Kim. I know. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? This this is why I hate this. <laughs> and it's the same with the people in the tent. There's always these questions. These seemingly existential questions that people like to pose, but they're empty and vapid. It's not a real qu how does one know anything? Just because we do know stuff, shut up. <laughs> this is not deep and existential, this is boring and trite. <laughs> not the game itself or the writing, I'm just saying the, 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 that personality. Well, and, and we all go through that phase, I've definitely gone through that phase myself. Ah, this sounds like epistemology. I feel so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. I know you don't know anything. Exactly. How can one know shit? For example, how can one be sure that there truly is a body hanging behind the hostel? Well, there isn't. We took it down. What if it's art? Or just a mere specter? It's not. A man is dead and we need answers. So what do you think we know? Do you guys know Cindy the Skull? Oh yeah. Cindy's a right proper skull. The young man's eyes glaze over, his voice filled with longing. She's not a very good school, she didn't stop me. Yeah, a true artist of the future. Just like Arno Van Eyck. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. He has returning from whatever void he was just visiting. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. On my left, you say? I see your kids are into anodic dance music. Oh man, yeah. We're not fucking kids, man. <laughs> Be wary of the abyss. Why? Probably because of how non-verbal their mode of operation is going to be. It's a threat. Uh, I like those. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Hey. Uh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Joking, too. Stay light, man. I love Kim Katsuragi. I really love Kim Katsuragi. Yeah. Didn't you cops, like, have some questions about skulls or some shit? Why aren't there more skulls in Martinez? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are. Are you part of Skulls or not? We're not franchise Skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. Franchised. That says it all, really. <laughs> what? This is <laughs> kind of my problem with counterculture as a concept. And look, at the end of the day, right, people should dress and act and believe whatever they want. As long as it doesn't harm other people, right? That, that's fine. You can do whatever the hell you like, as far as I'm concerned. And I understand why counterculture is such a thing, especially in the youth. <laughs> when you're a teenager, you want to feel different. You're kind of trying to find your identity a little bit, find your place and like how you fit into the world. And if you don't fit in with the inverted commas popular kids, if you're, you know, not great at sport or you're less attractive or you're less smart or you are super smart, you're too smart. You have to be smart, but not too smart. That's the, the, the level you're aiming for. But the point is, if you don't fit into or you feel like you don't fit into a certain group and you want to hang around with, you know, the gamers and the tattoo and the music people and all this kind of jazz. You start to think of yourself as a counterculture person. And you can see it all the time. You see, you talk to kids in high schools, not that I do this very often, but you see posts on Reddit or on Twitter or whatever, and it's people in high school, people in college, and like, well, yeah, but I'm not one of those stupid jocks, yada, yada, yada. Everyone's got a little bit of main character syndrome where they think they see the world differently than everyone else, and everyone else is like a blind zombie, unaware that everyone else is thinking that about them, but that's neither here nor there. And so they think, yeah, I don't want to fit in with the mainstream, I'm different than everyone else, you know, not like the other girls, not like the other boys. Um, I don't listen to rap music and all this. It's just people make being different part of their identity without realizing that they are the same as all their friends. <laughs> like, as soon as a counterculture is established, it's no longer a counterculture. It's just a culture is my point. You know, Hot Topic, uh, over here at least, um, 
I don't know what the, sh the shops would be in the US. Uh, over here we've got Aflex Palace, which is like this huge building filled with tattoo parlors and piercing places and loads of weird little shops. And it's a, it's a great, it's a really cool building, don't get me wrong. It's got some old vinyl shops, which I love. It's a, it's a really cool place to visit. But when I was a teenager, and I'm sorry, I'm going on a run here, but <laughs> people tend to enjoy this. We're going to roll with it. When I was a teenager, that was like the cool place to go if you were part of our group, because it was different and they sold things you didn't get in the usual shops and it was a little edgy. And it was unlike where the popular kids shopped. And people used it as a badge of honour, and they still do. But everyone else went there as well. Like, you can't pretend to be a counterculture, or you can't pretend to be unique and different when you all look the same, you know? Maybe you're not the majority, but you're not really a niche either. And the people who are truly niche, the people who are absolutely niche and unique, aren't in any culture because nobody wants to hang out with them, right? <sighs> Anyways. Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. But in a non threatening and definitely legal way. Mm hmm. <laughs> we'll fuck the system from the inside later. Just be cool now. The damage will be tenfold. Right on, fuck. So what's happening now? Mm hmm. What's with the jackets? What about them? Why does your jacket have. Yeah. Well. First off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character. And I do like piss. The word piss f epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Uh huh. Also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. Oh. What I mean by this is, we are all piss <laughs> and that the world is inherently meaningless. It seems that the young man has a certain expertise in at least one field, <laughs> even if it's rather narrow. And why do you fuck the world written on your jacket? Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one. For so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship. The thrill of the chase. The hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. Okay, that's not an invalid point, generally speaking. Um, I was watching a film the other day called... Blah, 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 I want you back. It's a... it's really good, actually. Well, it's not really good. It's decent. It's a little rom-com, but it's Jenny Slay and Charlie Day, who aren't typical rom-com leads, to say the least. And, um... They both get dumped at the start of the film and then become friends, and it's, it's a fairly typical rom-com beats kind of film. It's just got funny leads and good chemistry. Um... And at the end of the film, Jenny Slay is talking to the guy who dumped her at the very start of the film, and he says... You know, we don't actually have that much in common. You hate the gym. You know, he's a bit of a gym bunny. It's personal training idea. Yeah. You hate the gym. I hate blah, blah, blah. We actually don't have that much in common. Why were you so upset when we broke up? And she says, I was just thankful that the search was over. You know? That obsession with relationships and... Uh, and you see it with some people. I personally, when I... I got dumped, what, a couple months ago now? When I go through a breakup, I tend to pull away from dating for quite a while. I'm not a serial dater. Because at the end of the day, if I'm single, I can still be very happy being single. And if someone's going to come into my life and be my partner, they need to, in, if from my perspective, be perfect for me. Not not perfect, they'll be perfect in very commas, but perfect for me and perfect for my life. And I would want to do the same to them. It's never going to be... You know, oh, we'll make it work, or oh, I just have to be with someone, because I just don't think that's a good way to live. And you see some people hop from relationship to relationship to relationship without ever giving themselves time to breathe or being happy with themselves. And is that obsession and that, that feeling pushed by society from a very early age that you have to be in a relationship, you have to get married, you have to get kids. And that's all very real pressure that people do feel. I don't, but people do feel. And I say I don't. I'm 32 now. You know, it's getting... It's not societal pressure per se, but I do want kids and stuff eventually, so it's, I don't, there's a clock ticking a little bit. It's, just, it's, just, it's very far in the distance, but it's ticking a little bit. <laughs> like there's a bomb a few blocks over. Um, and I get the, 
the, the thrill of the chase, the hollowness when you catch it, because maybe not with relationships, because again, I don't think I've been in a relationship with someone I shouldn't be, and I didn't want the last breakup either. <laughs> but um, very often you'll feel that when if you strive for something for a really long time and you finally pull it off, not just relationships, but anything here, work-wise, hobby-wise, you know, maybe you've got a fitness goal or whatever it is, you often feel hollow. If something dominates your life, your, this goal, and you finally achieve it, I think I've talked about this in this playthrough, when you finally achieve it, it can often feel a lot less celebratory than you expected because suddenly there's this void in your life because that goal and that, that drive has consumed such a big part of you. Anyway. I wonder if the poetics come with the jacket. Or are they derived from something else entirely? I would like to point out that I don't think this is anything particularly deep. <laughs> I don't want to seem super hypocritical for what I said before, but this is just, I'm just, I'm just ranting. To catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times. And even then, it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though... That is a terrible metaphor. You get more fish in a shorter time. And... For time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly. One must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. Sticking your dick into the void. Hate to admit it, but in a weird way, he's got a point. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? <laughs> Definitely a coincidence. Coincidence so far, we are not wearing the jackets. Your lack of imagination is baffling, but you do make up for it with, yes, questions. Do we try it? Is it a red check? Oh, it's a red check. Okay, uh, I need some half light. Can we do anything with half light? Okay, uh, clubbing. Did I? I stopped organizing. I organized these differently, didn't I? Yeah, okay, we have to go through. Oh, there we go. I don't I don't want to wear the jacket, but you know, it's an option. Having more options, as we've said, is, is pretty good. Half light. Do, 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 do. Half light. Do, do, do. I'm not sure what song that is. I think it is a song. <laughs> Okie dokie. That ride is fucking lightning. Hey, piss. Look who it is. No, no, no. Don't ask anything. Be subtle and scary. The boys dream about being skulls. Use that. How? Suggest their massive skulls. Come on. Boys with those jackets are going to be the skull kings in no time. What? No. Skulls don't have kings. I think. And we're not even in yet. Yeah, man, keep your voice down. Skulls don't take it lightly when folks pretend to be them. We're not even prospects yet. Prospect must be a hierarchical term. Probably in the lower end. <laughs> not even prospects and already aspiring to be kings. Wow, you boys are ambitious. <laughs> Only prospects and already planning a coup in the skulls. You're destined to go far. <laughs> he gets it. Passive aggressive flattery. Shut the fuck up. Are you trying to get us killed? Now bring it to the jackets and, yes, start shouting. Yes, we want to be a cool killer skulls too, like you guys, but we don't have skull jackets. Please be quiet. What? What do you want? The, the jackets? You got it. No need for cruelty. Yes, the jackets. Oh, man. Okay. I get it. Skulls don't really wear slogans anyway. This was stupid. Fuck. Great. The lieutenant watches the boys take their jackets off with mild amusement. I'm gonna give him the one he wanted. I'm absolutely okay with not having either one, thank you. <laughs> Do you want to express your individuality? I already am expressing my individuality. I'm not. I don't have a jacket anymore. Good. I wanted you not to express yours. <laughs> Cold-hearted cop. 
Get to know your pair in case the need arises. The need will not arise. You never know, Kitsaragi. You never know. The jackets are meant to complete each other. If a man was standing alone on a street corner with this written on his back, it'd just be an individual that has taken a liking to urine and fuck the world all on its own is, frankly, generic. It is. I don't know, Eric. It's cold out. <laughs> the dark-haired young man just stands there, defeated. The wind blows. Yeah, let's get out of here. The cops fucked us. So it ends. It's funny, like, I kind of, like, I feel bad a little bit. Half-Light rhetoric, well, Half-Light negative, they're, they're not fantastic by any stretch of the imagination. Um, what was I, what did I swap? <sighs> oh, that's the gloves, excuse me, apologies. I kind of feel bad for them, but then they're trying, they're trying to join, like, a group and, and murder people and bomb shit, so I shouldn't feel bad for them. I just do. I don't like seeing people sad. <laughs> like, they can be terrible people. I still don't want to see them upset, you know? Um, I'm going to go talk to Everard next. This is a weird little episode for me to record. Actually, the next couple, probably. Turns out I'm going to do today. Um, I will explain why. So, you should notice... There. Do you smell that? Smell what? Can you not detect that inimitable whiff of dissatisfaction and restlessness? That sense that the world is in need of dramatic, even violent... Reordering. There's a communist nearby. Undoubtedly. And the scent is coming from that railing over there. From Manana? Yes. Man Now's your chance Man to establish contact. Manana. Manana! My communist brother! <laughs> Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Listen, brother. There's something important I need to talk to you about. What's that, boy? Yeah? Now's your chance. Remember, communists are notoriously skittish, so it's best to insinuate your way in. I'm looking for no, that just sounds like <laughs> it sounds like I'm hitting on him. It involves our mutual friend Cross. Put your hands next to your head and curl your fingers like deer antlers. Don't think I've ever met a Cross personally. Then again, I've never been to Grand. I'm investigating the peculiar smell. Uh, okay, grind the sausage. Let's go for it. Hmm. Have you tried a butcher shop? Okay, maybe it's time <laughs> to abandon the subtle approach. What I'm trying to say is I'm looking for communists, you know any? Communistas, huh? Can't say that's where I thought you were heading with this. Not that I'm criticizing. It's good for a man to take his time and think about the whole socio-political world picture. It's certainly been an interesting development to witness <laughs> this time. <laughs> has started with this drunken cop who doesn't remember a thing. I've gone teetotal. I've now kicked all the addictions and become a communist. So you've given up copying and now you're hunting comunistas. Care to say why? I'm not trying to hunt communists, I'm getting organized by them. Oh, I see. I wish I could help. Unfortunately, I don't know many comunistas. Are you sure you smell just like a communist? Didn't realize you could smell communism. But then, I've never studied the subject. You can smell all sorts of things. Fear, disgust, desire. Not communism, though. Maybe it's not taught in any of your so-called universities, but there's definitely something going on here. Ah, but you know, I did meet a genuine ideologo a few months ago. Perhaps he's your guy. It was late one night as I was leaving the harbor. He was waiting on the corner in a bright white jacket. Classic Saramiritian style. He asked me for a light. We shared cigarettes. Then he asked me if I ever thought about getting into some of the extra physical branches of communism. What's that mean? No idea. I took it to mean he was asking me to join some sort of underground cell. A very old school organizing technique. The sort of thing communistas used to do before the revolution. And what did you tell him? The same thing I always tell people who try to press some claim on me. I said, every boyadero rides alone. What's an ideologo? You know, a guy with a theory. Someone who likes to pit his theory against other theories in deadly theory combat. <laughs> it's like underground countdown. <laughs> How do I find this guy? I couldn't tell you. Once I declined his offer, we finished our cigarettes and he disappeared back into the night. Just before he melted into the shadows, he turned to me and said, Remember Dobrava and Abba Danais. And then he was gone. And who were they? I don't know. Guess not everyone remembers. Been wondering about that myself. 
some communista inside talk with me. No men for the wider public. They love that kind of thing. You'll have to ask someone who knows this ideologo personally. I have to say, though, it sounds like you found yourselves a proper hunt. The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. The communist journey continues. Oh, I was meant to go... I was meant to use the car. Whoopsie daisy. Um, right, so what I was going to say. Oh, are we on the right... Oh, hello, window. Damn. I think because my perception is so high, I'm finding some new stuff. Um, right, so I have been using the same microphone. I've replaced it once with the same brand. I've been using a Yeti... A blue Yeti for the last... Eight years, maybe, for YouTube? Literally eight years or so. There's a USB Blue Yeti. This isn't it. Uh, oh. Hmm. oh, it's this way, isn't it? A, a Blue Yeti. And um, <clears throat> when I couldn't sleep the other day, I decided I'll do some research. Maybe someone commented, basically, on one of my videos. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm going to go over there. Oh, wait, yeah, we have to go around. I've not tried this one in a while. See what we can do. See if we can <laughs> sweet talk the door into opening. You're back before the cargo container. Its not draw bad. has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Rhetoric. Rhetoric we're looking for. What's my rhetoric at the moment? It is nothing. Okay. Anyone want to give me rhetoric? Anyone at all? Okay. Anyone else want to give me rhetoric? Anyone at all? This is so annoying. Let's rock it. We can do this. I believe. Back before the cargo container. It's drawn despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you. A beacon of light emerges from deep within you. Ah, hi. So what did we roll? An eight. Oh, we didn't have to roll anything too crazy to pull it off. An eight is... I guess above average, isn't it? Average is six with two die. Is the average six? No, the average is seven with two dice. Surely. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, because the average of that, you would think the average is three because it's halfway to six, but that's not how it would work because you don't start at zero. So the average is 3.5. Does that make sense? Right, let, no, let me do some maths here. If you roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six, what is that? That's three, six, ten, twenty-one divided by six. It's 3.5. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was right. Okay, cool. <laughs> Is there anyone in there? The door stands silent. Satisfied, detective? No. Try again. If there's someone in there, I'd like to talk to you. Just like that, you hear a click, then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. Satisfied, lieutenant? Ahoy! Come on in! Mega rich, light bending guy. You can't be serious. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I need to finish talking before we go talk to this weird situation we've got going on here. And also let me change my gear back. Um, I changed my shirt. I promise I don't... Oh, there was that. At least with this, these two. Like, I know I always want to wear those. So it's really easy to remember. Um, so I got, I've, I've got a new mic for the first time. I've been using a USB Blue Yeti, which is a great mic. And obviously it works fine and the noise is great. But someone commented that they could hear my keyboard clicks. They said, oh, your mic, you could do everything... You've got... Near 800,000 subscribers, and your mic quality is terrible. I was like, well, my mic quality is fine. The problem is it's picking up all the other noises. Because it's a, um... Compound mic? A condenser mic? So it picks up quite a wide area of noise. And, um... If you want to get professional with your sound, you use what's called an XLR mic. Which uses an XLR cable, which doesn't plug directly into your PC. You need something else in between. So I got what's called the XL, uh, the Wave XLR, which is the Elgato equivalent. It's like a sound device. <laughs> I can't remember what the official term is at the moment. But you connect your mic to this device, and you connect that device via USB to your PC. Um, and... You need something that's going to boost the amps. So these mics are what's called dynamic, in which they pick up a very, very small range of sound, basically right in front of themselves. But that means it kicks away all the background noise, all the typing, all the clicking and stuff like that. And uh, in theory, my mic quality should go up and it should be 
as good as it's ever really going to get. This is this is a setup that you know professionals use in podcasting and stuff like that. So I'm hoping tomorrow. I've actually got the mic here already, but the Wave XLR doesn't arrive till tomorrow. I want it used. I'm a little concerned, but we'll see. Um, but anyways, by this time tomorrow, I should have that, and um, I should be able to. Uh, I should be able to have a more professional setup, basically. But I bought a new keyboard, which has quite a tippy tappies anyway, even though you won't be able to hear the tippy tappies. Why am I talking about this? Oh yeah, so it feels a bit weird recording right now, because like, I know I'm waiting for this upgrade, and the upgrade is on the way, and tomorrow, and like maybe I should just wait, but also I have nothing to do today, so, <laughs> you know, eh, what else am I going to do? So, uh, hopefully, I will mention it at the start of the video when it's happening, but um, yeah, hopefully you should see an increase in quality pretty soon, so you know. Alright, let's go talk to the rich guy. The rich, like, whoa, what on earth is happening? The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. It's hard to say anything more about him. You cannot make out any of his details, but you do feel the overwhelming presence of capital. What the hell is going on? The feeling causes all the hairs on your body to stand at attention. Like soldiers preparing for review. The game has slowly got wilder and wilder between this and the crab man. <laughs> you know, it's getting a little mad. Something's amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended, distorted, and echo. Trying to visualize the physics at play is liable to give you an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard. In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter. Hello. Welcome. Come in. Make yourself at home. Sorry, I'm not better able to receive you. I wasn't expecting visitors today. You can't hear him exactly, yet you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange. An overwhelming hum covers everything. Voice doesn't escape from him. Now, what can I do for you, gentlemen? What you can see of his body appears composed in a sharp summer suit and yacht shoes. Who are you? Who am I? <laughs> oh, I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Anyhow, my name is Rustam Diodore, investor, license holder, and extremely high net worth individual. And you are? Mr. Diodore, I am Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi of the RCM, and this is my partner. I love that that just continues being an option. Pleasure to meet you, Harrier Dubois. I must admit, the name suits you very well. How did you become so rich? Oh lord, not this again. What's the matter, Kip? Oh, nothing. It's just that we've got this murder to solve, and yet you go around asking everyone about money. And every time I ask, are you sure this is related to the case, you say, sure, Kim, I think it is. <laughs> and yet, it never seems to get us any closer to solving the case. Oh, oh, wait, 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 what? What just happened down here? What just happened down here? <laughs> Quite all right. I'm used to the question by now. To be blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself was an extremely high net worth individual back in Graz. All I did was take her fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailing boats, bad choices, and unsupervised state policy. And blow. What's it like being an extremely high- or, yeah, I don't want to ask him about money anymore, Kids Ruggie's got it in my head. I gotta tell you, at first, being rich is a lot of work. You got to work hard because everything's so darn expensive. You know, prices increase exponentially at this income level. But then, once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out ahead, no matter what. Like at the moment, if you had stocks and eggs, you'd be making a killing. <laughs> it's a running joke at the moment, especially in like the bodybuilding community, because egg prices are just... 
tripling, quadrupling in the last months, year or so, like the last few months even, egg prices are getting insane and obviously eggs are a big thing for people who want to build muscle. Um, so all the memes with stocks and stuff like that, it's just eggs at this point in time. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, but doesn't that take all the fun out of it? And I tell them, not really. It's great that you've done so well for yourself, but don't you think you owe some of that wealth to the rest of society? Sure. And they benefit when I buy things to stimulate the economy. Do you know how many jobs it takes to build and maintain a racing yacht? It can't be thousands. Dozens, at least. <laughs> of course, in the future, it will all be automated. But my point is this. He says, jabbing his finger into the air a bit. Every man gets what he earns. It's the height of tyranny to take that from him. Capital makes one speechless, does it not? Blinds like the sun that rises from beyond the horizon after a gloomy winter. Hey, hey, all this talk about money has made you lose the thread. What is going on with the light in this place? That's what you need to ask him about. I dislike the situation. I, di I dislike him. <laughs> I am curious though. What, what's going on here? What do you mean? You look somehow a little different. Are you talking about my chin? Yes. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't even see you. It's as if something's happening to the light. Oh, that's what you mean. Yes, I've heard of this effect, though I've never witnessed it myself, of course. It has something to do with our weiss wiesemann coefficient. The weiss wiesemann coefficient is a ratio designed to reflect the difference in net worth between individuals. When the coefficient is close to 1, or 100%, it means one person possesses all the net worth. Among that group of individuals, it's been observed that when the weiss weismann coefficient reaches about 0.96 or so, the laws of physics begin to bend around the high net worth individual. <laughs> and this is just the thing. This is just the fact of this world, that when you're super rich, physics bend around you. <laughs> other things, but calm down. I am but a lowly single digit billionaire. Okay. That's good. <laughs> Kim, are you seeing this weird stuff? I see nothing of the sort. To be frank, all I see is a gentleman who is unusually well dressed for Martinez in a cargo container, which I admit is odd. So, Kiss Rocky has a lot more money than I do. Yes. I imagine that does look strange to you, my container. What are you doing in the container? Traveling. This is a great way to get around. It's fun, it's safe, and it gives me lots of time to think. By the way, let me now ask you a question. Where are we exactly? In the very, very early days of colonizing this archipelago, the Kingdom of Serenes, a precursor of a modern Sir Leclerc, used to own the city of Rivershon, an obscure detail in the bigger picture, but still worth dropping. Okay, I'm going to trust you encyclopedia. We could also mention the hostel, the church, the commercial area. Ah, a fellow history buff. I myself am currently reading up on Franco-Nigerian era trains. Very interesting stuff. It's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. One of the downsides of being an extremely high net worth individual is that mobs of all net worth individuals are constantly banding together to ask for money. Why can't you help them? There simply aren't enough hours a day to hand out all the handouts. It's like feeding seagulls. They're always more and they never seem to do anything interesting with it. Except more seagulls. Spending money is a matter of desire. I'm sure you agree. I don't have the desire for spending it like that. Mm. Travel from place to place via shipping container. Smart, no? It also provides a means to hide from all the targeted advertising we extremely high net worth individuals are constantly subjected to. I mean, look, I've, I've got my issues with billionaires in the first place, also, as we talked about, but I think as soon as you make your income part of your personality and who you are, and as soon as it starts to matter that much to you, it inevitably warps. You are a person, and I have no interest in conversing with you 
if anyone ever brags about how much money they're making, I just like, if you can be happy about it, you know, if you've got a pay raise at work and it's really good and, you know, that's great, that's fantastic. Congrats. Proud of you. I mean, it's, oh, I can buy so many, oh, look at my several cars, I can buy many cars, I can buy a baby and eat its face if I wanted to. I don't want to do that because I'm a nice person, but if I wanted to buy a baby, I could buy a baby. I don't want to hang out with someone who wants to buy a baby and eat its face, you know? Luxury yachts, high fidelity portable radio systems, nail proof outerwear, and so on. It just gets a bit middle class after a while. A bit bourgeois. They sound nice. Don't get me wrong. They are nice things. But once you achieve a certain level of wealth, your time and mental space become much more important than material goods. He speaks from the heart. He has very different problems compared to low net worth individuals such as yourself. For example, no problems at all. No problems is in itself a problem, I guess. Go right ahead. Okay, bye. Why go so soon? I feel with so much more to talk about. Ah, well, until next time. I'm assuming when I leave, all that money's gonna. Yeah, oh wow, so as I get closer to, it, closer to him, my money goes up. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> now, the question is do we want to ask him for money? I'm concerned that Kitaragi's gonna get annoyed with me. That's always my concern. I like him a lot and I want him to like me. I wish I'd found this guy yesterday. I could have happily done this if Kitsuragi wasn't around. Uh, no, I don't think we're going to do it. We, we may come back later. I don't know if Kitsuragi's going to go again, you know. Right, we came here to talk to bloody everyone. It's been 40 minutes. I've not done anything. <laughs> I've literally achieved nothing today. Which is good. It's, it's, again, it's one of those games where achievement is not the point. Experience. I hate your goddamn typewriter, Everard, just so you know that. Yes, of course. Now we're on the right track. <gasps> it smells like we're getting crates and pallets calling to mind. Vast stands of winter pines. A swirl of ancient odors absorbed by heavy carpet fibers. But also a pervasive, treacly sweetness that somehow reminds you of cola nuts. The whole place could probably use a good deep cleaning, you think. I don't know what cola nuts are, but they sound delicious. The lieutenant gives you a sharp, sideways look. Okay, it's ready. Meanwhile, Everard Clare clatters away on his typewriter, willfully indifferent to your presence. Okay. Hey, Everard. Every worker. A member of the board. That's right, Mr. Dubois. I see the socialist democratic fervor now burns in your heart too. How can I help you today? Okay, there's a lot to talk about here. Um, I'm looking for a cell of underground communists. Can you help me? Mr. Dubois, really? Do I look like a man who has time for underground communists? I'm as above ground as it gets. You say that, but we know he's like taking money and scheming off on the side. He's basically a fervent capitalist who's using communism to, to make its cash, which is what people do with causes all the time. And again, that comes down to your morality. Like, if you release a product fully recyclable and every time someone buys it, someone gives a hug to a dolphin, right? You're putting good into the world, but if you only set that product up because you know it'll make a lot of money and you want a lot of money because you're... you want to buy dolphin killing machines <laughs> or something well, the only reason you you set the company up is because not because of the benefits but because like eco stuff is like big money these days right and that's a good thing and it's a good thing when good moral things become the capitalist agenda because then everyone pushes for it but it doesn't make you moral unless you're doing it for moral reasons you know what i mean the good place had a whole thing about this with uh tatiana not tatiana what is... Oh, I've forgotten her name. What's her name? The big giraffe lady. Oh my god, I just rewatched it. How have I forgotten? I worry about my brain sometimes. Le Le Luani? No, that's her sister. Da Da Ba. I'll remember eventually. Anyways, but she did all these charity benefits and stuff like that, but she didn't do it for moral reasons, so she didn't get points for the good place. You know what I mean? That's a non sequitur, if you've ever heard one. 
Let's drop the funny stuff. I'm trying to make contact with my revolutionary brethren. Sure thing, Harry. We're all business now. The answer is still no. I'm a busy man, as you can see. I Talani? don't block off time on my schedule for underground types. That note of contempt in his voice is sincere, sire. You've already spoken with Manyana, as I understand. I'm afraid I don't have anything else for you on this subject. That's all you're going to get out of him, it appears. Now, was there anything else you wish to discuss today? Jesus, I've just finished investigating the local drug trade. You've got a lot of spirit clearing up the drug problem alongside this murder. I'll talk to the mayor and see if I can get you the key to the city, Harry. Now, let's talk real business. Actually, Rivershall doesn't have a mayor. He refuses to discuss it further. It's probably just a small nuisance to him. Not even a speck of anger in his voice. That's that, then. Hmm. Remember the container we asked you about? Turns out there's a mega rich light bending guy inside. <laughs> mega rich light bending guy? Oh my god. How did that get in there? Uh, so rich you could get in anywhere. Damn it to hell, Harry. I specifically told my guys to check all the containers for mega rich light bending guys. Kim, tell him he was there. There was a guy in the container. But he didn't bend any light. That was in the detective's head. Honestly, guys. We might be moving all kinds of suspicious things through this harbour, but I won't be caught transporting the light-bending mega-rich. I have a reputation to protect. <laughs> got so many weird up Okay, yes, for God's sake, you're a socialist. The mega-rich are people too. He was a nice man, gave me stock tips. <laughs> yes, the transportation of the mega-rich should be more tightly regulated. It didn't seem like he was safe. He should be honoured by the presence of this Magus. He was of half Revachulian blood and amassed his wealth using the mysterious bond of nationhood. Socialist. You're right, Harry. I am a socialist. I'm going to catch the mega-rich guy inside the container and harvest his energy to power the harbour's fog lights. I feel like you're not being very serious with me, Everett. <laughs> I shudder to think what you're going to tell me next, Harry. Thank you for confirming that for me, Everett. Not for one second did he believe there's an actual mega-rich person somewhere in his container town. But there was. It turns out the strikers were being served an alcoholic brew. I stopped at this madness. I don't know what that means, Harry, but I love it. <laughs> I love your initiative. Knowing you're out there keeping things running lets me focus on the big picture stuff. I want to break him. I want to see underneath this facade. Don't even tell me what was going on. Alcoholic brew, stronger, stopped it, strike, I'm just going to let you surprise me, Harry. When I say I'm going to break him, I don't mean in a... I... 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 <laughs> Never mind. I met Joyce, the company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals. We're all trying to do what's best for Martinez. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I helped you get the body down. And I'm helping you find your gun. I'm not a jealous guy. Except you're not helping me find my gun, are you, you numsy? I told Joyce that I met you. It's perfectly okay. Even if you've told her everything we've talked about, it's absolutely fine. What happened to the previous negotiator, Mr. Gormont? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I <laughs> wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. You called him a midget. Harry, I have little people in my organisation. I would never call someone a midget. What is it? <laughs> Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. <laughs> This is so weird. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper, or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. Joyce said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Joyce didn't mention any casserole. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. 
Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. If it's spilled blood you're looking for, then there certainly isn't any in his expression or demeanor now. Hmm. Everyone, Joyce seems to think the union is low, low boil, bo bleh, bleh, bleh. Everard, Joyce seems to think the union is lowballing her. Yes, yes. Lowballing, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behaviour. Why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everart doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. Yeah, it is. It is strange. He's pushing it very far. I'm reconsidering opening that door you asked me to open. Perhaps it'll help me somehow. A fantastic change of heart, Harry. Go talk to Manyana down by the gates. He'll brief you and give you the key. Just open one little door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. That's it. Anything else we should discuss? See you later. I'm sorry, Getsuragi. I do the things I have to do because I have to do them. Alright, let's go talk to Manyana, my communist friend. Well, sort of communist friend. I'm not really communist friend, but still. Oh, I really want to go ask the thinking, the guy about the, um... About the, uh about the money. We're gonna come back here anyway, inevitably, so. Next time, man in container. Next time. Maybe? I don't know. I need to think about that. I, I really don't want to annoy Kits Raggy too much. It's my Bezzy, you know? It's my Bezzy mate. I remember when we couldn't get in here for so long. Uh, times have changed. I wonder if I could have got down that other way, though. Manana, what is this little mission you've got for me, buddy? Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Everyone says you have a key to a door. A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? He said it belongs to a weasel. Oh, say no more. I got you. He taps the side of his nose with a little wink. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. Not really doing this for political reasons. Oh, so the none of the above type are you? I get it, I get it. I like to keep my distance too. But it doesn't matter. It's a good thing you're doing. Thanks. Occasionally communist, occasionally just doing what I have to do to get the case solved. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling in rags. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. His gaze wanders off into the distance. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. Anything else I should know about this task? This weasel person, when he'll be home? I'm more of a philosophical dock worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. The man takes a big sip from his flask. He means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everhart. Ask him about the Hardy Boys. Do you know anything about the Hardy Boys? Los Ardis? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. 
except it's Ebrard's law. But really, they're just like you. Is he actually comparing you, an officer of the law, to some neighborhood vigilantes? Come on. He's just trying to keep the peace. Gonna let it go. The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. Why are you striking, manana? We're negotiating our share. Your share? Aye. He seems pleased with himself. Not wages or pensions or... This stuff. They already covered. However much you feed the wolf. The wolf always wants more. I like wolves. How large a share would you like? All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board. So they could take part in the decision-making process. You see how that's a ridiculous idea though, right? <laughs> this seditious talk sounds like communism. Just so we're on the same page. Communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people. Or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grad. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. Ah, the boss man, Everard, what can you tell me about him? I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. What does bossing the union entail anyway? I guess you kind of get to be the village chief. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties. Watches out for his own. By that, you mean corruption? By heavens, why would he not be corrupt? We live in a harsh and disordered world, see? And in this world, the old man is corrupt for our benefit. And we know it. Appreciate it, even. He is, personally, not too lavish. The desk was pretty lavish. He is reasonably lavish, sure. That's his prerogative. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. That would be a manipulative illusion. Catholic Church. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway. And moralism is the most corrupt of them all. Not you, you would like to say. But then there's that weasel door. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what we do with the weasel door, all right? This man has political theory. And it has not failed him today. No. I don't think I'm a communist. Seeing something of value and saying I want it all to myself is a much older and simpler notion. No science to it at all. Even a weak child can think it. The only things holding someone back are I can't and I shouldn't. Shouldn't take what's not yours. Then how can anything ever be mine? But that's okay. We don't have to agree. The prairie is wide enough for all of us. I mean, you, oh, but that doesn't mean I agree oh, with the balance of what is yours and what is mine and what's everyone's, you know what I mean? This needs to be changes. You seem to have spent a lot of time thinking about that. My, my character has become too communist, <laughs> I think. Sure, I've had the necessary free time. Fortunately, there's always time. The look in his brown eyes conjures up an understanding. For him... Having command of his time is the most important thing. It all comes together now. The way he speaks about scabs, his general attitude. He's a follower of a 500-year-old Franco-Nigerian Boyadero code, itself an appropriation of Vespertine cool. That of a noble peasant or a traveling herdsman. True to yourself, independent in your actions, loyal to your friends. Huh. Maybe I'm a bow, bow and arrow. No. I, I, but. No. But. <laughs> the man sits on the railing, his hands reaching far and wide. Yet it uh. feels as if he could effortlessly go even wider, if need be. An endless torrent of time. <laughs> Game has no time for my nonsense. I didn't mean to. I mean. It's not, oh wait, we've got some tear, don't we? The tear machine. Your bottles clunk into. Ah oh, yeah. There's nothing I want to buy, was there? To the left of. I think so. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with. No. No, we're good. Um. My temptation to heal is overwhelming, by the way. Like I, I know I shouldn't heal because it doesn't logically make sense to do so. But my God, am I tempted? Okay. Oh, the, uh... There they are. Okay. Oh, God, I'm tired. Right. So, we need to open the door. We also need to click this Wait. button here. No. Something about this bunch doesn't smell right. 
on the Everots guys? They are, but they don't seem too keen to talk with you, do they? Well, yeah, okay, but we've been through this a few. We talked to them quite a few times, and I'm not surprised they don't want to talk to me. No, they don't. Glenn seems to be contemplating grievous bodily harm while he massages his raw knuckles. In the far back, Eugene is doing his best to ignore you. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fat Angus keeps shooting you furtive glances and mumbling uneasily to himself. And from his perch at the end of the table, Titus Hardy himself stares at you with a cold contempt that makes you want to leave the cafeteria straight away. Besides, you're pretty sure they consider themselves social democrats. All right. Oh, it's just—it's just, it's literally just telling me they're not communists. Um. Okay. So whilst we're here, oh hello. Wait, is that the other... Oh, that's the... The, the fascist. Uh, right, we're going to talk to this lot, obviously. We're going to talk to our um, cryptozoologists now that they've returned. Then we're going to go upstairs and talk to Clash J. And then we're going to go behind and get, look at this door situation. Things to do, things to do. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you lovely folks very soon. Cheers, much love as always. Bye-bye.